Well, collectors, here we are again. We're just back from the Mac show here, and uh, this is episode number 92. Is that right, Ob? Yeah, 92. 92, and uh, today is the 20th of September, uh, 2023. So what we'll do today is we'll we'll look at uh, some of the things that we uh, bought at the Mac show. And um, also things that came in while we were gone, although I told people not to send things while I'm gone to wait until I get back, but there were just a couple pieces that came in, boxes I should say, so uh, we'll look at them. Uh, you want a drink, Ob? Sure. Yeah. As is our custom, we, uh, we don't like to be doing these videos too sober, you know. That would take all the fun out of it, wouldn't it, guys? Yeah, we want to have fun in these things, and we want you guys to have fun, too. Because it is a fun hobby, and uh, I know we all take it pretty seriously, because there's a few bucks involved, but uh, having fun with it is the most important thing. So I want to say that uh, we, had a, we had a very, very um, good Mac show, um, selling-wise. Uh, we sold a lot of things, and um, what I particularly liked was that uh, uh, we didn't sell any real expensive things because we didn't really have any real expensive things. You guys buy everything before we get anywhere with it, but we took a lot of uh, a lot of basic uh, basic daggers with us, uh, and lo and behold, uh, we had many, many, many uh, new collectors come to the show. Uh, and we sold a lot of those kind of um, entry-level pieces and even though they're not a lot of money it's amazing how much it, <laughs> it adds up uh, after the end of a, of a three-day show so I was very happy um, the only thing I wasn't too happy about was uh, there wasn't an awful lot um, to buy there uh, and again I think it's reflective of how fantastic the hobby has been uh, the last couple of years it's uh, um, anything that's really nice seems to uh, it goes out under the table or uh, it gets sold uh, um, before it gets onto the website not just by us but by other dealers too so it's kind of hard to get uh, rare daggers you know I know you guys a lot of you guys are looking for uh, SS daggers and uh, you keep writing me for them but uh, there's just not that many that come in anymore, and I, I try to help where I can, but um, it's kind of tough. And then, also, as we like to do, I got a couple of pictures in yesterday of the uh, of, uh, people at the show, and I thought I would share them with you. And uh, the first picture here, uh, this is um, B.J. Rice. Uh, along with old Whitman there in the white coat and guess who the guy is with the sunglasses on and a black shirt that's Ob so for you guys that are wondering what Ob looks like there you are is that you Ob? I don't know it looks like you Ob, I don't know <laughs> I don't uh, remember I don't remember and then we have another photo here uh, this photo is of uh, Chris Hoffmeister and I think he's also, yeah, he's with uh, me. And there's Ob in the middle there. And uh, both those gentlemen were at the show, of course. And uh, uh, Chris also wanted me uh, to mention that um, his wife Elizabeth is having a birthday on the 22nd. So that's a couple of days from now. So I, I hope the video is out by the time your birthday arrives, Elizabeth. And I wish you a very, very happy occasion. Uh, so okay, we'll put you guys up on the up on the door there, and uh, thanks for sending the pictures. And if anyone else has some pictures that were taken with me, which I think there was quite a few of them, or remember, send them on in, and we'll be happy to uh, to show them to you here on the video. Again, supposed to be having fun. Did I give you any Pepsi? I don't think I did, Ob. Got to thin it out a little bit for you. I don't want the camera going in the wrong direction. There we go, just a little bit. 
All right, so with that, <coughs> I'll start out here. Uh, I think I'll do the boxes that came in, and then we'll do this stuff we bought at the show um, after that. And a uh, gentleman was kind enough to give me a, a, a nice um, a Habana cigar at the show. Uh, so I think I will uh, celebrate that when smoke the cigar here. It's a Guantanamera. Sounds like it comes from Guantanamo Beach then, or where is not where the prison is down there someplace? They got guys making cigars, do they? I don't know. Well, let's see. I hope it's not too mild. I find a lot of time the Cuban cigars are are too mild for me, but we'll see here. We'll give it a whirl. All right, that's good. Yes, sir. You still with us, guys? You know me and these cigars. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, there we go. I'll let you know how it is when I get a few drags in. Well, let's see what we got first here. Try out the Bob Burns cutter and go from there. Yeah, that's a good short one. Mm-hmm. Oh, that tastes pretty good. Mm. Just right. How's yours, Ob? Did you sip it yet? Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. Let's see what we got here. Looks like some smaller things, guys. Yes, sir. So I hope a lot of you made the show. I mean, I saw a lot of people there, but I guess I guess there's a lot of people that didn't either. I know it's uh, the long ways away from some folks, and uh, I did meet a couple there. It was really interesting. Uh, uh, they came from El Salvador. That's in Central America, and uh, they brought with them. Three bags of local coffee for Old Whitman, which I appreciated. A very, very nice couple. And then they said they wanted the three best Army, Navy, and second Luftwaffe dagger I had. And uh, we spent a few minutes going around to each of the areas, and that's what they bought. And hopefully they got home safely to El Salvador, and thank you very much. It was a lot of fun to meet them. Oh boy, this looks nice. Yeah. Well, what we got here, guys. This is a uh, Joachim von Ribbentrop uh, salad fork. Uh, very, very nice item. And uh, these are uh, much rarer than uh, AH silverware. And they're every bit as important. And prices have really been going up on the Ribbentrop silverware in the last year. Uh, they're really nice, and they're, I believe they're marked on the back 925. They had a higher silver value than Hitler's flatware, so, so that's a good thing. And this looks like it's just a pad. Okay, yeah, this is just a pad. So that's what this gentleman sent in. A very good piece there. Remember, Ribbentrop was in, in charge of the, uh, he was the, the head diplomat, and it uh, was his job to, to entertain uh, the allies or friends of Germany. And uh, so he needed to look his best. So that's why his silverware was even better than, uh, than AH's. So uh, that's, that's a pretty good thing. I like that. Thank you, sir. Let's see what we got next. All right. Let's see what this is. 
Mm-hmm. open without too much turmoil here. Need another drag of this cigar. Yeah, this Havana is okay. It's very, very nice. Um, but is it, it is a little bit mild. But it, it's okay. Well, let's see what we got here, guys. Feels like a dagger. We shall see. I hope everybody's in the fall now. Because it's uh, really nice here in, in Moorestown. Terrific temperature. Nice and sunny. Really enjoying it. I've my, had my friend Mike Polizzi here for a week. Helping me with the uh, with the Mac show, I think it was the 36th year that he's been here to do that. And uh, he went home yesterday afternoon back to Rochester, New York. And as usual, I really thank Mike. He's really uh, really a great guy. Let's see what we have here. Uh, All right, this is, uh, he says it's a etched bayonet that he reminded me about weeks ago. I'm glad he reminded me again because I forget about it too. And let's see what it looks like. Uh, we always like etched bayonets and we sell a lot of them. And they're very, very popular. And thanks to the great books by Mr. Wayne Teckett of Las Vegas, identifying and showing the original pieces, uh, the bayonet market has really, really uh, uh, gone up in the last few years. Well, we got a nice, uh, really nice hilt here. Bright finish. A little bit of flaking there on the end, but not bad. Um, got some felt in the rifle slot and a good scabbard and good grip. Let's see what the blade looks like. Up. Oh, there we go, guys. Uh, this is a WKC, um, the typical etch that we see from WKC. These are very, very uh, common bayonets, but they're still very, very nice. As in memory of my service time on either side of the, uh, the eagle. And then the other side is plain. And this is the short kind of bayonet we call with a stepped end. When the, when the ending ends like this, we call that a stepped end. A lot of bayonets, they they go straight on through to the tip with, with not this interruption. So, so that's a good thing. Thank you, sir. I like that. We can live with that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Another box, not too heavy. Let's see, I guess we'll try opening the end of this one. Yeah, I need a little hit here. Mm. Uh. Yeah, that tastes all right. Some of you guys having a little pop too, are you with us? I hope so. A lot of guys write in that they enjoy having a little, little drink while we're doing the video. And I like that. And a lot of guys are smoking cigars too. And I certainly like that. So keep it up. It'll keep you healthy. Not really, but you know what I mean though, guys. Hey, right, let's see what we got here. Oh good bags. Yeah, bags a lot of free bags, yeah, Bob. Bags. You like these bags, yeah. don't you, Bob? Yeah, it's running low. <laughs> Well, we don't get them in New Jersey now. The environmental people yeah. have banned them. I was reading uh, something somewhere. They said everything comes in a plastic container, but you buy all this stuff in plastic containers, and you can't put it in a piece of plastic to take out of the out of the uh, <laughs> the shopping mall in Jersey. Yeah, isn't that ridiculous? Yeah, <laughs> it's true when you think about it. Well, 
I guess, uh, I don't know if they're going to save the world by not using plastic bags in the supermarket in New Jersey, but uh, I guess they're trying. Uh, I don't know, I kind of think it's all going to blow away one day and we'll be right back to where we were in uh, 1920 again. But, uh, oh, and then the bags, they sell you when you forget your own bag. Yeah. You know, and they charge a, I don't know, a buck, buck and a half, two bucks for yeah. a bag. That's also made out of plastic, too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's a scam. Oh, man. Oh, it looks like we got a, an army dagger here. Oh, it's quite a nice uh, icorn. Yeah, it's got the, um, it's a very nice icorn. It uh, has the last style uh, cross guard with a with a fine um, fine grip and um, uh, second last style scabbard. It looks really nice. Um, it's got the earlier furrow on it. So let's see what the blade looks like. Ah, doesn't get any better than that, guys. Perfect condition. And there's that icorn trademark in there. And the scabbard's got the. The screw in the back that we like to see there, that flat head type screw. And a lot of times you'll see that thicker throat on these icorns. It's funny that they used up an earlier ferrule, whereas everything else is just a little bit later. How can you tell it's earlier? Uh, it's a little different than the later ferrule. I can show one if we see one, we'll compare them, but uh, uh, it's still very nice dagger. Uh, I don't think there's a letter in there unless it's buried under all this, all this plastic. But uh, oops, yeah, there is no no letter. But I assume it's for sale, so we'll we'll <laughs> certainly be interested in that because it's a nice piece. Maybe he's looking for oh. a barrel. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what he wants for the bags, Hob. Mm. Yeah, and. Uh, Looks like one more, one more box here, and then we'll get to the to the Mac Show stuff. Let's see what this baby is. This is coming from Canada. Let's see what we got here. See what the Canadians are sending us these days, guys. Mm. Wow. Another nice drink. Oh, it looks like the looks like the Cubans go out too, guys, just like the Denobolis. Oh well. Mm-hmm. And it's true, any good cigar will go out. Well, what do we got here, guys? Oh, well, this looks nice. Mm-hmm. This is a, um, a later uh, SS dagger. And just looking at it, um, it looks like it might have that zinc type eagle in it. Uh, it has uh, nice fittings and pretty good scabbard paint. Uh, nice um, period hanger from the same time. Grip fits good. No chips or anything. The back of the scabbard has better paint than the front of the scabbard. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, super blade. Look at that, guys. That blade is really, really nice. Really nice. And then we got a, a 941-37. That's a, an earlier um, RZM. And uh, the, uh, the mounts look to be nickel, too. 
which could be with a 37 date instead of plated. So that looks like a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice dagger. Very nice. So I kind of like that. All right. Well, we'll see. But that looks that looks okay to me. All right, collectors. I I thought I would show you some uh, some kind of cool stuff that uh, uh, came in uh, right before the show. Um, this first box is um, not anything really special, but it has a nice uh, peen surface and a uh, Wehrmacht Army Eagle on it, and it's uh, for cigarettes, see? Just a simple box, not real expensive. It's not silver hallmark, so it's probably nickel silver, I think, but it's nice. Uh, this next box uh, is really a gem. Uh, it has a, um, a dedication on it, uh, and it was uh, it was given uh, as a gift uh, for the officer who won uh, the Knight's Cross. Uh, and this particular officer uh, is a very, very famous man, uh, Herman Fegelein. Uh, you all know Herman Fegelein, I'm sure. Uh, and the dedication is given to uh, Fegelein on winning his um, German cross, uh, and it's from his um, his brother Waldemar. I think you said Knight's Cross earlier. Huh? No, I meant German cross. Okay, You're can right. You tilt that back up. Yeah. No, not that. The inscription. The inscription. Yeah. yeah. Tilt a little more. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, that's better. Did I say Knight's Cross? I believe you did. Oh, I'm getting senile in my old age. <laughs> You're not getting. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, Ub. Sorry, but um, and the um, the German cross is a, is a jeweler's facsimile on this box. Uh, but just think of how rare this is. Um, Hermann Fegelein uh, wound up as uh, Hitler's uh, brother-in-law because he married um, Gretel Braun, Ava's sister. And then I guess most of you guys know that. Um, Fegelein uh, was shot. Um, uh, he was trying to leave the bunker at the end of the war and Hitler had him shot. His own brother-in-law uh, and I think uh, Gretel was pregnant at the time too so no heart there at all. Oh sure he was so upset about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But this is a very fantastic uh, one-of-a-kind thing. Very, very beautiful. Uh, this piece here uh, as again is a, um, a cigar or cigarette box uh, only I believe that the metal on the top is an original um, uh, gold German cross uh, so obviously the uh, person that received this box uh, got it because of uh, winning the uh, the German cross see how it's held in by nuts on it there uh, quite a uh, quite a nice uh, a nice box I'm not sure what kind of metal it's made out of and there is no uh, no dedication on it but obviously it is what it is uh, and then this uh, this last box uh, is a real treasure um, this was given as a uh, as an honor gift from the city of Weimar um, and it was given to Fritz Salkel, who was the gal later there. Um, Salkel was quite infamous and very, very well known uh, in Turrigan. And this is the uh, Turrigan eagle that's uh, in the center of it. Um, uh, Salkel didn't make out so well after the war. It seems that uh, he was using uh, a lot of uh, slave labor for different projects and uh, uh, that earned him a rope noose so I guess he didn't get to use his uh, cigarette box after that time so there you go that's uh, that's some interesting things there I think um, and while I'm at it with 
interesting things. Um, I love this. This clock I bought at the show. And um, as you can see, it has a, a head of the Fuhrer. And then the second hand uh, is a swaz that turns around on it. And it still runs. It's got a bell on it for a bedroom clock. Uh, and I think it's really, uh, really a neat thing. Uh, kind of comical, really, when yeah, you look the, at it. The second hand's the Fuhrer spinning around. Yeah, it's the Fuhrer spinning around. Um, these are the kind of things, guys, that when, um, when the party had uh, big rallies or party day or any big gatherings, uh, just like today where... There's a rock concert, there's people all along the area selling shirts and all kinds of trinkets and this falls into that, uh, that category. Uh, uh, I am sure that Hitler would not have liked this, <laughs> but yet again, there was probably not much that, uh, that he could do Let's about it. Let's see the back it. of it. Okay. Any kind of marks? I think so, yeah. That's pretty sophisticated, Yeah, there's isn't a lot it? of stuff. Oh, it's yeah. a really nice clock. Um, Tilt the back a little bit towards you. There you go. It's a really nice clock that I'm that I'm going to keep. Uh, I didn't pay much for it, but I think it's really, really, really nice. So don't call to buy this one, collectors. I think I want to keep it. And then another. Is the second hand still turning? Yep. yep. And another thing that I bought that. Uh, uh, you guys know that uh, I like cufflinks, and uh, this is an original box. It's a velvet box. It shows uh, quite a bit of wear to the surfaces, uh, but you open it up. It's the original box, and inside is a set of silver cufflinks, and what they have on them, there's an eagle on the top positioned over the globe with a zeppelin over the globe and then a swaz at the bottom of it uh, so these were either worn by a zeppelin officer uh, or i guess it's possible that uh, uh, in the hindenburg or any of the big zeppelins they must have had a little gift shop although there were i think they only held 25 passengers so something like this i think is um is really 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 rare i can Try to take one out if you want to look at it. See, that's what they look like on the back. Let's see the front again. No, uh, no, no marks. I don't think there's any marks on them, no. But I'm sure they're silver. Can you get that at all, or is it? Hold on. Yeah, that's cool. You can show me these. Aren't they cool? I didn't show them to you. I thought I think they're terrific. Uh, never saw anything like it before, and as you guys know, anything related to the zeppelins is just super, super rare. So I think I'll keep them. Yeah, you should keep them, Pop. They're nice. Maybe I'll wear them this winter when I get into the cufflink shirts. Let's see, how does this go back in here? Something like this. I don't know, but I'll figure it out later. And Ob and I picked up this submarine. It's, a, it's all brass. It weighs a ton. I don't know whether it's a German submarine or what it is, but, uh, but we kind of liked it. Maybe you guys can tell by uh, the shape of it what kind of submarine it is. Uh, but it it weighs a ton. Absolute solid brass. I think it's a neat thing. Let's say it's more solid bronze, wouldn't you? Huh? It's bronze, isn't it? Bronze, yeah. Yeah, you said brass. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for correcting me, Ob. I can't seem to get anything right these days. It's a good thing I got Ob here. Mm -hmm. Alright, we'll show you some other things now. Okay, guys, we'll show you some more stuff. Mm. But I think Ob needs a drink, and mine's looking a little sparse too, so we'll do that. 
Don't want to be too sober here. Alright, that's that. set guys and uh, now here's a couple more things to look at um, the first thing is uh, obviously a gas mask and it's all complete with everything um, I'm not going to bother taking it all out but it's got all everything that you would want and it's all in mint condition and pop the lid at least that's a nice uh, nice piece there you can see inside with it with the goggles and all that stuff and okay uh, I hate to take them out because then I can never figure out how to get them back in again uh, but that's a that's a nice piece and uh, this again uh, is another piece that probably would have been sold during one of the one of the rallies by a, an astute vendor uh, because I'm sure that the fewer would not want his face on this box, but but there it is. I think it's um, I guess it could be a big uh, cigarette box, something like that. But it's nicely made. It's um, it's like a sheet a sheet brass, I think. Nicely uh, decorated with oak leaves and all that, and uh, on the back as well. Wooden, of course, it has the wood bottom to to preserve the moisture for the tobacco. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and this is um, uh, this is really nice. Also, um, uh, it's a prize. It's a cigarette box. It's all silver, and it's a prize from um, Krefeld. Uh, Krefeld was a major city. Uh, and uh, a lot of you guys know they built a bridge there and that was a big deal. Uh, this comes from uh, Crayfield, uh, September 21st, 1941. Uh, I don't know what the, uh, the box was a prize for, but um, perhaps that uh, date could be looked up in conjunction with Crayfield and uh, someone could find out. But uh, it's a very, very, very nice thing. Uh, I think that it's, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's hallmarked 835, so it's um, not a cheap deal, it's a very well made, very well made box. Okay, we'll get some more stuff. Okay guys, I'll show you uh, one of the swords I bought at the Mac Show. Uh, this is a very beautiful piece here uh, with the gilded hilt and beautiful gilded fittings and nice scabbard leather and um, can anybody guess what kind of sword this is the crossed hammers will give you a clue uh, this is a coal mining official oh, man. believe it or not coal mining officials at least the officer or uh, highest guy that was in charge of the group um, they did have dress occasions and uh, there was a, a sword offered for their use, uh, which this is an example of. And it has a super blade, just fantastic, in stone mint condition. Uh, and it has various, uh, various scenes uh, on the blade. Uh, and then uh, in the center, um, is the words Gluck Alf with cro with uh, crossed hammers on on both sides of that, and Gluck Alf, you know what that meant, collectors, good luck, and that was the slogan of miners, good luck, and believe me, you must have needed it in those days, or even in modern days. Mining has always been one of the most uh, dangerous things that you could do, but the blade is just super. And then to add to the fun of it, uh, the reverse is in the same condition, and uh, and it has a beautiful 
1933 to 35 Eichhorn small oval trademark. Can you get that up? Yeah. So nice this sword was purchased very early on in the period, uh, but then again, how many times would a coal miner get a chance to wear something like this? Uh, thus, the reason I think that it's in such beautiful condition. So for you guys that, uh, that are collecting sword types, uh, a coal miner sword is quite a rare thing. Have you seen that in the acorn catalog anywhere? Uh, I think I have in earlier catalogs, yes, I think I have. How um, many of they could have uh, made? Also, too, I didn't show yeah. this, the, um, uh, the hilt has the hammers on oh, it, yeah. too, there. Most of the firms sold these, but uh, they didn't sell very many of them. And this one is just, I mean, virtually in brand new condition still. Well, there's a lot of coal mining stuff in this business. It's it's weird, yeah. but there is. Caps, well, it was, a big, it was yeah. a big thing, and uh, Germany has a lot of coal. Uh, now we'll get to some other kind of things. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's see what we got here. Let you get a, a look at these things. We bought a... We bought a um, a nice pennant at the max. It uh, it's a BDM pennant, as you'll see. It's got the all all black for the BDM, and then the separately sewn uh, HJ insignia. And you're ripping the tag off of the corner there. Yeah. Great, and it also has a, an old style RCM tag still on it. Uh, and then on the reverse, it has the um, the runic symbol. What do you call this symbol, Ub? It's a wolf angle. Wolf angle, yep. And I think that was a symbol for good luck again, uh, be safe kind of signal. So that's not a bad uh, not a bad pennant at all. Uh, it's not too big and. Uh, Pretty easy to uh, to display, I would think. Uh, so I like that. We'll move on to some other things. See what else we got here. A couple of doodads here. Uh, this. Um, this is, uh, it looks like um, probably the, um, the top of an, of an antenna off of an SS officer's car. Uh, it's interesting, the, you see the runes on this side, then you see the runes backwards on this side, which I guess they figured looking in the mirror from the car in front. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, that's how it's done. Nice, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? No, I think that's a good way to put it, yeah. I like it. I think it's a nice thing. Yeah, I mean, why the runes are backwards on the back from the rear view mirror. You don't yeah. think, yeah, you think that's so possible? That's it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then this, um, uh, this utensil here, if you guys can make a guess at it, it's actually for picking up an asparagus spear. Isn't that cool? How it has the the rings in it for the fingers. Yeah, uh, I think we did that one before. To tell the truth, Dad. You think we did? I don't yeah, know. No, uh, no, I just go through it. Um, and it's got the um, uh, the AH monogram with the uh, uh, Reich Eagle on it, uh, and it's also um, I think it's Wellner mark somewhere along here. Uh, I don't really see where it, oh, maybe, yeah, way down in there, it's Wellner marked. Yeah. So it comes from uh, AH's uh, service. We got this right before the show, so I'm, maybe I would have, maybe I showed it before, I don't know, but if not, you'll see it again, guys. Uh, so that's that. And uh, I never did show this bayonet, it's been sitting here. Uh, you guys, uh, you can see that's a pack, pack hilt. But just look at this thing. What a 
killer. It's just tremendous. It's got the um, the oval uh, with the bugler. It's quite rare that etch and very very desirable. Yeah, I like this one. Yeah, and then on the the back, I think it has the um, the pack trademark on it. What did you call this again? The stepped bayonet? Stepped end. Stepped end. See, with the way that mm -hmm. end is. That's a stepped end. A lot of you guys, you probably see that stepped end referred to in write-ups on things. I just want to, probably a lot of you may not know what that means. But that's a, that's a pretty nice piece too. Alright, we got lots more. Two more things here for you. This is a, um, a coaster, a drink coaster, and it's uh, uh, from the uh, the Berghof. It's an AH coaster. Uh, some of the plating's been rubbed off here, where somebody wanted to get the AH initial out there, um, and then it's marked on the on the bottom uh, Wellner like it should be um, and also which uh, what's nice about this coaster it still has the um, original uh, orange felt in there a lot of them I've had in the past the felt has been going to time but that's still the original one coaster is not in the best of shape but it's uh, it's original and it it is what it is and then uh, we have a uh, a nice um, uh, holler, I think it's a horster, it's a holler, I'm sorry. Nice holler army dagger that I bought there just because the condition is so really, really nice with it. Uh, never been cleaned and and really, uh, really terrific, terrific throughout. It's just a nice piece and, and then the blade is uh, completely mint. That's a nice, uh, nice dagger. Somebody looking for an army dagger, uh, they just don't come any nicer than uh, uh, than that. And Holler, uh, they made they made nice fittings. Uh, the fittings are unique to Holler, and that's that textbook Holler cross guard. So that's a nice piece. And then next we have a we have a really interesting um, Italian piece. Uh, this um, I'm not sure exactly what these are. Uh, I've had I think one or two in the past, and uh, everybody says they're some kind of an Italian youth knife, uh, but they're pretty nice for a youth knife. They they have the Italian eagle on the grip. Uh, and then the pommel has like a goddess figure on it. Um, and the grip, I think, is like a carved wood. And then it's still in the original leather scabbard, which is still in good shape. And you, and you pull it out, and uh, uh, the blade has a couple of spots on it, but it's not too bad. Uh, but this is a rarely seen um, type piece. Uh, you're not going to find many of these in... For you guys that are interested in Italian stuff, um, this is a very, very difficult example to find. So I was delighted to find it at the Mac show. Good looking too, isn't it guys? Good looking. And then this, uh, this is really lovely. It's, um, it's a hunting knife, uh, but it's the highest quality you'll ever see. The the grip plates are just outstanding, made out of stag, absolutely beautiful. And the uh, the scabbard is made out of pig skin, a uh, nice brown color. And then the blade is just uh, just stone stone cold mint, really 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 nice. Um, and then the reason why 
the piece is so nice is because it's made by J.A. Henkels. Absolutely the best maker for any kind of um, hunting pieces. Still in business today. Isn't that nice, guys? So that would have cost somebody some bucks. But it was well worth it. It still looks good 80 years later, doesn't it, guys? Okay, I still got lots more to show you. You hanging in there? I hope you are. A lot of, lot of different kind of things here, but uh, I think it's stuff you all like. Uh, well. And now I might... I'm just going to put these all out. I bought some essays. Lots of essays. Uh, some better than others, but I'll go through them real quick. Uh, this one is an EPS, and it's really, really nice. The scabbard is uh, got the anodizing. The grip is nice. Beautiful uh, pack fittings. You can see that scabbard on both sides. <coughs> and then the blade is mint. It's really, really good. Really good, and. Um, and then on the reverse is that EP and S early uh, Siegfried with his with his uh, hammering his sword, forging his sword. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, so that's one. <coughs> the next piece is a um, Wilhelm Kober, which you can see that Sewell fitting there, fittings there, and uh, the nice walnut grip that was. Sewell factories made, um, but there's some age, a little bit to the scabbard, and damn, somebody, uh, somebody dropped the, yeah, that's a good one, the dagger, and uh, really, really hit. They must have hit concrete. I don't know. He must have had too many, and uh, <coughs> walked out of the bar, and the dagger fell off. But and the blade is still, it's not mint. It's got a little tiny bit of sharpening. On just on this part of the edge, I think, maybe a little bit on the other part, but got that dark motto. The dark motto is still there. A little bit's gone, but it's still there. Uh, and then it's a uh, it's a <coughs> Wilhelm Kober, which was one of the three Sewell makers. So it's not a bad dagger, except for the ball. But you know, guys, maybe maybe sometime you'll run into a, a dagger that's a real beater that sells for nothing and it's got a good bottom fitting on it and uh, maybe you could change it. It's not the end of the world. Um, let's see what we got next. Another early piece. Uh, this one is by Dick. Uh, it's got a nice hilt. Good fittings. The scabbard shows a, a little bit of black here and there. It looks like it may have been an NSKK at one time and the paint all came off. I don't know but uh, it is what it is. And uh, the blade is still quite nice on it. Good motto. And there's that F Dick mark with the arrow. And of course, it's got the Grupa in there. Grupa is uh, SW Sudweist. Okay, and uh, I've got another one here. Uh, the anodizing is all there, but it's kind of turned, kind of old looking. Uh, the grip does have some nice, um, nice grain in it. Uh, fits the guards like a, like a glove. Uh, this one is also an EP and S. Um, the other side is okay. Doesn't look like it's ever been apart, this dagger. Good ball. Yeah, and the blade is really nice on it too. Good blade, still has grain in it and all. Um, and there's that um, that EP and S hammering Siegfried there. That's a nice dagger. EP and S made nice stuff. 
the quality was really there. So that's that one. And one more here, two more, sorry. Um, again, a, a very nice hilt with nice nickel, nickel guards. And uh, uh, this one is made by Justinus Work, which is really a, a nice example to have. It's got a, a B.O. Uh, Grupa. May have been a stinky place. I don't know, Ob. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> then uh, the, the blade is pretty good. Looks nice. And then the uh, that trademark for Justinus work is one you don't see too often. Last one is uh, it's kind of a little bit more unusual, but original. Uh, it has a um, has aluminum cross guards with kind of a darker grip, very dark grip, um, with um, uh, good good scabbard paint, and the uh, the scabbard mounts are nickel on this thing. Uh, which is apparently uh, maybe they were using up parts because it, it's all original to the piece and then it's also got an early early sort of hanger not the earliest but uh, you can see it's a, it's a nice uh, nickel plated type um, again using up parts and uh, and then the blade is uh, just a killer boy that blade is nice got all the grain and uh, that's a nice blade and it's um, it's an RZM M749, uh, which is um, Friedrich Herder. You don't see that very often. So that's a, that's an interesting kind of a transitional dagger, is what I would call it. Okay, guys, and uh, we were lucky. We got we got a couple of uh, of nice um, Hitler Youth knives. Um, uh, this one is. Um, uh, I like a lot. It uh, it has terrific plating yet. It's a steel base and good grip and insignia both sides. You can see the plating is really really nice. Um, and then you look at the blade and uh, the motto is still good there. The blade is it's still bright. It shows some age and all but it's not bad. See that motto still in there? Good. So that's kind of nice and then then on the back which is really striking you just never see this wow <laughs> look at that isn't that something never seen that before yeah EPS made HJ knives that were different from others they had they did have rivets and or um, spanners and that kind of stuff early on and this must have been one of the first regular ones they decided to make because probably the costs were too high on the, yeah, but the early gigantic ones. Too. I know it's gigantic. Isn't that, that isn't that cool? You seen them? Before? I don't. I don't remember ever seeing a hmm. gigantic mark like that on an HJ it's knife. Like the size of a fifty cent piece. <laughs> yeah. And then what else is cool with the scabbard? It's got all kinds of stuff scratched into the paint here. Uh, I think it, it says um, HJ, and then there's a, a 4 or something, and then it says AD, and then it says 1937, and then it says like EW, and then it says 1942. So the guy must have carried this thing that's probably a, a summary of his career, maybe. I don't know. But I think it's a, a really, really interesting um, HJ knife, don't it's you, a good piece. Yeah, it's a good piece. Yeah, it's very, very it's interesting. Crazy. So I like that a lot, and that trademark is just... Whew. And then this one is also a, a real beauty. Um, just look at the plating on that hilt. Just fantastic. Just really, really nice on both sides mint really mint and the scabbard is nice not perfect but still very very nice the leather is really good uh, and then when you look at the blade 
<laughs> well, uh, is that something, guys? Look at that. That's not something we see very often with a motto jumping out like that on the on a blade that is just uh, just fantastic. You like that, Ob? It's a nice motto, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's got a 37 date on it, and it was made by Emil Vus, RZM M72. Really a quality piece. You got to be careful, Emil Vus's too, because they did repro them in the 70s, but that's an original. I think that's really a, uh, a really a nice knife. Okay, guys, I'm gonna still. You still wanna? You wanna see some more? Take a couple more minutes. show you this piece uh, I uh, I saw this at the show and uh, uh, it was expensive but uh, I just thought it was really uh, really remarkable and I hope you guys will like this um, it's a uh, it's a WKC army dagger um, it's in beautiful beautiful condition throughout with uh, textbook WKC fittings and beautiful grip, beautiful scabbard, never cleaned, beautiful port of pee. But you ready for this? I think this is really cool. Look at the back of the cross guard. Isn't that a fantastic skull, guys? You getting that up? This dagger would have been worn by a Panzer officer, and he had the skull engraved on the back. Unbelievable and beautiful. If you get the camera and get in there and really see all the intricate work in that, it is just, uh, just beautiful. I've never seen anything of that quality before. Uh, and then, of course, the blade is... Um, oh absolute mint condition couldn't be better just like brand new really really nice who made that well it's a WKC oh, okay you said that sorry yeah but that skull is just uh, I had to have this dagger I don't know some of you guys out there if you like stuff like this uh, maybe you'll have to have it too but it just really I just really think that's a that's a great great thing. I've been in this a lot of years, and uh, oh, and it's got the one screw on the scabbard too. But I just really <coughs> love that. Uh, I was so delighted to uh, find it at the Mac show. So there you go, guys. That's one, and now I still got a few more things. This, um, uh, I think, is a uh, uh, absolute museum piece. Uh, a lot of you guys may not be into uh, hunting and forestry, but those that, of you that are, uh, uh, you're going to love this. You're going to love this cutlass. Um, I guess over the years I've had hundreds of cutlasses, but I can't remember any that um, came up to this standard. Well, maybe one or two that I have in my own collection, but... Mm. Mm. Yeah, this Cuban is not bad. I like it. Mm -hmm. Now I'll show you this, guys. This is... Um, this is really, this is the top of the line, the best you'll ever see.
just look at that guys look at the beauty of those silvered fittings and the workmanship and the pommel oh, and the grip someone spent days hours and days hand carving all those beautiful designs if you look closely that's a lion's head that's coming out of the center of it let me see oh yeah you're right it is, it is. just just beautiful 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 and then the cross guard with the uh, the crossed um, cutlasses in the cross guard and the beautiful dogs heads just incredible and then the uh, uh, the clamshell what does it have on it it's a, it's a dog. ah it's a dog with yeah. a rabbit in his mouth yeah. look at that beautiful beautiful so that's a lion <laughs> yeah I think it's a boar and then on, on the other side there's more of the more of the same kind of stuff that might be a boar I'm not sure and I think it looks like a lion to me. Maybe it is a boar. And then the uh, uh, the upper scabbard fitting is a work of art. Look at how those oak leaves are done and pronounced. And the lug is fantastic. Yeah, it's really nice. Really beautiful. And then the bottom fitting I just absolutely love. Look at those oak leaves. I've never seen them so extremely well done. What period are we talking about here? Uh, 1895 to 1900. Yeah. It still has uh, the Skinner after all that time? I'm going to show you. <laughs> and the scabbard too is uh, pigskin, brown yeah. pigskin. Very really beautiful condition. And uh, then the blade is just incredible. Uh, look at that lovely, lovely thing uh, with the hunting scenes. Uh, really a really a beautiful piece and uh, I think the maker is um, uh, in the front here I don't know whether you can get it but it's um it's of course it's Henkels C.A. Henkels they're the, the only ones that could make things Hold like the tip that for me okay yeah, put your finger on there. Yep. okay now wow do you see it down there yeah I got that sucker I got those twins yeah the twins and then the other side of the blade is very beautiful too. I've never seen this etch before. Incredible. What's in the Casas? Uh, oh. oh, that's cool. It's a dagger. It's the dagger with a shotgun in the center. Is that what it center. is? Yeah. Yeah, a cutlass and a shotgun. Mm -hmm. Did you get this beautiful etch? Give me a minute. <laughs> and then the... Um, Just give me a second here now. All right. And what's in the center there? It's tough lighting up these etch blades. Yeah. What is that? I can't make it out. Can't get it? What's the center there? What's in the dead center? So a lion, that looks like a lion head. That right? looks like a boar to me. So, but yeah, I think it's a boar. It's, a boar. it's the same boar. It keeps yeah, maybe it is, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Now I see it. Okay. Yeah, see it. It's a boar? Yeah. I think that's a boar in the top. Yeah, too. It might be. Makes more sense than a lion. Yeah, it would. And then the... Um, and if the cutlass wasn't nice enough, then the, the Skinner... <laughs> just look at that, guys. I mean, it just... Uh, yeah, it nice. just uh, never keeps, it never ends. It's just really beautiful. Just for it to be in the the dagger still is a yeah. miracle. Yeah. And that's your uh, hunting horn on there. Yeah. But for you guys that like lovely pieces, the other side too is just as nice. That uh, that has a deer stag in it. Yeah, he's the one that made the grip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a nice piece. I Hank think that's... Um, and the Hankles, too, with the hunting dagger. You don't see yeah. that too often. I think it's a bestial. 
the best you'll ever see. I I don't know whether I'll keep it or not. I might. I don't know. But it just uh, it just uh, is just so lovely. Look at that, guys. Just uh, what a work of art and the mastery of craftsmanship. Uh, I doubt if something like that couldn't even come close to being made today. Just um, beautiful, beautiful. I really love it. Uh, and for what it's worth too, guys, I bought that in the parking lot out of a car trunk. <laughs> I really did. Maybe just because the guy didn't want to take it in, I don't know, but, uh, but I was really, really thrilled with it. And I got one more, one more piece to show you if you got time. What are we, uh, we're, we still got some time. Hmm. How's your drink, Ob? Pretty good. You still alright? I can do no, one more. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think I'll have one more too. We didn't get that far in this bottle, Ob. We're, long we're usually pop. almost at the bottom by now, but um, maybe the video wasn't long enough, or I was too interested in talking about the stuff. Or I think we're just too maxed out. Too maxed out. Yeah. Well, I'm tired. I know you are too. You want another hit? Sure. Uh, I ain't that. I'm not dead though. <laughs> not dead. No. Nope. Either am I, guys. We're still at it. Yeah, Max, it was a tough show to do. Oh, it's uh. People pulling on you, and people asking you questions. People when their picture taken, and people, oh, it just uh, it's. It takes three weeks we to have pack ten four, tables ten here, tables running and back and forth, and uh, yeah, three guys uh, there, it's, and you're one of them. <laughs> oh, just uh, well, Mike Polizzi, thank God, God thank for him God for Mike. Whenever, Mike, we can't do it without you. <laughs> no, nah, uh, that guy runs a hundred miles an hour, and. Uh, uh, and the one thing he always does is, Robbie says, uh, what's those initials, Ob? G-T-M. Oh, yeah, that's the, uh, yeah, G-T-M. You know what that is, guys? Get the money. <laughs> I know. I know. That's a TJ like... thing that I stole, though, in all fairness. Yeah, I think that's Ron Winans. Uh, oh, yeah, well, then yeah, he stole GTM it. G-T-M. Then... Johnson but it, but it's true though, you know, it's so busy, you're, you're so many people around and everything is going on and uh, uh, sometimes you might forget, geez, that's right, he didn't forget me the money. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, it's always an experience. Although, like, like Ob says, after the, it's actually four days for us and it's actually uh, a whole month for us. Uh, yeah. well, well, the packing and so forth. But packing, the unpacking. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the hotel was nice that we stayed in, and uh, uh, we tried not to not to go crazy at night during dinner and drinking, so that we felt good the next day. Although eh, it felt pretty good, but not <laughs> but anyhow, well, I got one more thing to show you. And I hope you guys will like this. I mean, you always, you always do. You like these, and you, uh, they're getting so hard to find anymore. Nice ones. Um, uh, it's just I was thrilled to, uh, to be able to at least find one of them. And you probably already know what I'm talking about, but I'll show you here, guys. Um, this is it. Uh, a very, 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 very nice uh, example. Uh, if I can get it right here. I should have taken a tag off of it, but but here you go, guys. Look at that beautiful chained SS dagger. The dagger itself is um, about mid-period. Full um, rig, too, yeah. Uh, but the thing I like uh, that really sets it off, the spectacular knot. That port has never been untied 
and the way the original owner tied that is real <laughs> it's just unique and uh looks like he was in the navy first before he joined yeah, ISS. It, just, it adds so much to it uh the fittings are plated uh but they're in absolute perfect condition no sign of any lifting or anything why don't you lay it down it's so beautiful. i can see it better pop okay it's got a type 2 chain um and the chain uh, has all of the blackening in the backgrounds and all the blackening is in the center ramp and the scabbard is all anodized, all anodized in perfect yeah. condition. Uh, it, it does have an aluminum eagle in it, uh, which is when, the sign of when it was made, probably 38 or 39. Um, look, at, look at how nice the uh, the links are and uh, and that blackening boy people love that you know it just uh, and it has the uh, the two screws in the center ramp which you don't see all the time but a lot of times you do with these anodized scabbards um, then the reverse chain uh, I guess we got that Coulter Zeichen yeah there's that Coulter Zeichen stamped in there and the links are all in, the connectors are all in good condition. Can you see it, Aubrey? No, you're making a mess out of it. Get that yeah. knot out of there. All right. <laughs> yeah, the knot's uh, screwing the whole thing up here. Just there to untie it, that's all. Yeah. Uh, but this is really a lovely, a lovely chain dagger. I think it was the, the best one at the show. Uh, although I didn't, I think I saw one other that was kind of a beater, so there wasn't much to choose from. But this is really a, a, a dynamite piece. It was expensive, but and then the blade is just super. Mint blade, really, really nice. With a motto. And then the, uh, the reverse of it, of course, is uh, not marked. So this is a, uh, a classic, classic chained SS dagger. Um, and like I say, the, uh, uh, the knot, the guy, obviously the man that owned this was a Waffen SS guy. Uh, you collectors may know or not know that um, uh, you could only, what's the matter? You could only wear the, um, you could only wear the chained SS uh, with a knot if you were a Waffen SS, um, either officer or someone who had earned the chained SS by service time. Uh, and this is uh, absolutely a great, great authentic piece. I love it. So there we go. There's not many of them around anymore. They're all in collections. Uh, and it's really getting hard to find them. So if someone's interested in that piece, that's something you can enjoy for uh, a lifetime. So there we go, guys. Uh, that was our um, Max Show purchases. Not a lot of things, but, uh, but nice things. Uh, varied things and fun. Uh, so, as always, uh, I appreciate you watching the video and uh, send your comments in if you like because I like to read them. Uh, and we'll be back with you uh, next time. So, here's to everybody. Thanks again. Bye.